Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Tonight News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be our second in two days preview from the Reading Royals against the Newfoundland Growlers. As for the second time in two days, they take on the division-leading Newfoundland Growlers, who were able to capture a 3-2 win over the Royals, where, in my opinion, Karoz Domenko was the MVP of the game for the Royals, because he still, we have to remember, work, putting things in context, working his way back from a hip injury, only played two games over in Belarus, really hasn't had any reps in the last calendar year, minus the ones we've seen in front of our faces for the Phantoms, and for the Royals, so it's expected coming off of that, where you, it, it affects your horizontal movement big time, and then you don't get the reps, you're probably not going to look the best all the time, and it took him a little bit to work back, this was his best overall game of the season by far. And the Royals, the first goal, fluky. Second goal <clears throat> was not on him, bad defensive positioning. And the third goal was post luck that the Royals weren't able to get themselves. But again, if you enjoy the content, please subscribe here or on the easy-to-use widget at the end or the subscribe button down below, as well as over at Flyers Nitty Gritty, who I cover the games for each night. They do great stuff over there for the Flyers, Royals, and Phantoms coverage, as well as Delaware Thunder in the Federal Prospects League. But tonight, our Royals, obviously, the key to this game is no team, obviously, as all great coaches point out, whether it's Torch in the NHL, whether it's Trotch, whether it's Kirk McDonald here with our Reading Royals, nobody ever plays a squeaky clean, like a full, saying you need to play a great 60 minutes. Nobody, I think, that actually knows hockey is saying you need to be the best team by far or the really stand out in every component of the 60 minutes and be that because that that's not realistic, but being having it like the 90-10, like Kirk said, your 10% just can't be like he's been talking about. When we've been bad, we've been really bad. If you balance it more and you have like meh periods of games and you have lulls, that happens in pretty much any game and pr most sports games. A team goes through a little lull period of the game. The problem for the Royals is they don't go through a lull period of the game. They go through like how you see terrible stocks go where one day it's all the way up here and then it's down here. They got a very unbalanced thing going, which is what they need to correct because six or seven minutes, like Kirk McDonald talked about in the post-game press yesterday, can affect the outcome of a game. And with the Royals, that's exactly what it's doing because their six to seven minutes are so off compared to other parts of the game, like, for example, the final five minutes where they were so on. So it's now about trying to find that balance. You're never going to be squeaky clean a full 60 but you can be a lot better in that 10% that you just have that little lull period where it's actually the definition of a lull and not a complete kind of collapse like the Royals tend to have at times when they're having their off periods. But the key thing about this team and the key thing moving forward to remember is they're still obviously in a very good spot and a very good position I'm um, coming into tonight so we got to keep that in context we haven't got outbeat in an entire game minus the game against the main Mariners of course and Pat Nagel was able to carry the torch now is Karu Ustamenko's opportunity and he looked good in his first game back being able to get a full-blown opportunity the team just didn't look good around him quite frankly minus in pieces of that game where in the first 10 of the first period, they were really able to limit, or a little bit longer, limit the growlers. And then once they got that fortunate goal, they were able to push a little bit more, but still played a solid first, just looked like a little bit of a tired first at time. And then the second, the first half of the second, the Royals didn't get a lot of chances, obviously, but they got still a few from Pritchard and Morrison, who looked good in his first game. But then they had that really bad law period all of a sudden after the penalty in the second period there. They were able to score, and then all of a sudden it just kind of fell after that ebbing penalty until the final five minutes, and you can't have that big of a fall. That's what the Royals need to correct. Also, having Winquist back, when he would obviously be huge for the Reading Royals. He was not able to go after the fight last week. Yesterday, hopefully, maybe he'll be back and ready to lace up his skates and play for the Royals tonight as well, because that would be huge. Obviously, guys, highlighting if Morrison plays again, he's a guy I'm definitely highlighting for the second game to watch. Number two, Brad Morrison, because he he just came right in and looked, obviously he made that sweet dangle that he almost scored on, but he just looked confident out there if they're not playing for a couple weeks, and that's a very good sign. Obviously, Pritchard is a very good and fun player to watch all the time, and you know, guys know if you've watched my videos before how much I love Braden Lowe and just how he does all the small things right. So those would be my three forwards to watch for a running Royals. When it comes to 
defense. I always just like shout this guy out because he doesn't get on the points board like we see McNally, Crocock, and Cormier do, and I love those three as well. But David Drake, who got the start yesterday, it's because, obviously, Kirk McDonald, see, he just plays a nice, clean, steady Eddie game. And you don't always get the most credit for that, but I like shouting him out for saying he just does play that nice, clean, steady Eddie game. Isn't going to make the biggest plays like you see the others sometimes make offensively that make them stand out more, but he definitely does play that nice, big, steady Eddie game. Obviously, for the Royals, the most interesting thing this weekend, I would honestly, if he's able to go, because again, he's coming off a of hip surgery, hasn't had as much rep, so you got to see and feel with Usti, I guess, what he feels is best for him, obviously, because that's the most important thing. But if he's able to go back-to-back, -back, I would go with him, because this is the Newfoundland Growlers. This is a team that, when I talked to their announcer, Chris, yesterday, while at the game, has like 13 guys on AHL contracts. This is the most potent offensive team, and the Reading Royals are right up there with them as one of the best teams in the ECHL to start the season, but the Growlers, the reason they're just a wee bit better than us to start the season is they don't have for the most part this year when you watch their games, that lag period as much as the Royals where they have those mid-periods of a game, like I said, go into the tides and waves of every game, but they don't completely go from here to here and then have to work their way back up. They kind of go from here to like here and then have to bring it back up, not all the way down to the bottom of the mountain. So you got to play this team more aggressive. You got to be obviously disciplined because a key penalty seemed to be the game-changing moment when Evans took that penalty. They really grasped full momentum of the game at that point. They already had good momentum, but really just took it fully slanted the ice to their direction yesterday. So you got to be more disciplined. And obviously, like we saw the power play get a sweet goal from Ebbing, the same Ebbing yesterday, as Tomas Ebbing was able to kind of redeem himself after taking that bad penalty, at least getting a goal. Uh, we have to see the power play continue to cycle the puck, but also not over-cycle the puck and take a shot when they have it. So this has been a preview to the Reading Royals and Newfoundland Growers Part 2. Let's get the W tonight and show them the Lions energy. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. I'll see you at the game tonight as I'll be covering it for Flyers Nitty Gritty.